Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta, your uh, watercolor artist friend from Italy and you know that I have a strong passion and curiosity for our supplies. Today I'm sharing with you my studio palette. I've had this studio palette for a couple of years now and uh, there are some paints that I use a lot and there are some paints that I don't use at all. So it's time this year in 2023 to set up a new studio palette because um, I think I'm missing some important colors but let's swatch together my current studio palette the one that I've had for a couple of years first color is um, neutral tint by Schminke and it's a color that I like to use. It's the only black, can you see? It's the only black in my palette because uh, I keep uh, mass black uh, in a different palette with granulating colors. And this, I use this uh, a lot to darken or mute uh, other colors. So I think it's very useful color to have. And this is by Schmincke. Then I have a color that I used very much when I started painting and it is the Paints Gray. Now I use it slightly less. And um, I used to, I use Paint Gray especially for shadows. Now I use it for mixing uh, greens or maybe for muting or darkening other colors but it's a lovely it's a lovely paints gray it's a nice color to have in a palette i think everyone should have it and mine is from winsor and newton then i have a cotman color and it is purple i'm not sure it's the correct name but it's purple and it's by cotman and uh, it's quite hard to be wet. And you know, Cotman is not as pigmented and other artist gray. But when I started painting, I had a lot of Cotman colors and I hate wasting paint. So I'm trying to finish them before I replace them with the um, artist gray paint. So this is my purple. I use it a lot for shadows, portraits, sky, especially for shadows and portraits. And then I have a color that I think is very nice, but I don't find myself using it. And it is Delft Blue by Schminke. And this is uh, basically PB60 Industrial Blue. Do you use it at all? Do you have it? How do you use it? I haven't figured out. So although I think it's very beautiful color, just don't find myself using very much. I am waiting for your comments about this color. Then I have Indigo by Winsor & Newton. Very useful color to have. I use it for a nice sky, for, <clears throat> for sketching jeans when I sketch people. Nice, very nice color. Also, it mixes nice greens. Uh, Prussian Blue by Sennelier, another very beautiful color. Look at this. But once again, this one, um, I'm not using it very much. I use it sometimes for seascapes, for Mediterranean Sea, not for tropical sea. I think it's very beautiful this color, but once again, I'm not um, not using it very much. Do you use this color? How do you use it? Put it in comment below, please. Then uh, a color that I use, of course, very very much. I keep feeling every feeling, and this is French Ultramarine by Sennelier, and. Um, 
Senelli are always beautiful colors, very pigmented. This is adorable, especially as a mixing blue. I don't use it much pure. I use it a lot as a mixing color for grays or stones. Perfect mixing blue. Then I have a cobalt blue by my Mary, but this is not PB28, so it's not classic. Cobalt blue, it's PB36, it's more, um, this is more cerulean actually. It's very beautiful, very granulating, but I think I need a real PB28, cobalt blue. This is PB36, I think I said it. Beautiful color. I use it sometimes for adding a bit of drama to skies. When I have cerulean, for instance, or manganese, I add some touches of cobalt blue. Then I have uh, a color that I really like and I use a lot, and it's phthalo blue. This is by Schminke. I like to use this uh, for tropical sea, mixed with uh, viridian, or for backgrounds in portraits. Because it's a nice sky blue. I like it a lot. Now, one of my recent discoveries and a color that I adore. I like it so much that I don't use it very often because I'm afraid to waste it. And it's manganese blue, manganese blue hue by Tanya Smith. I think this is the most beautiful sky blue. It's warm, it's delicate, wonderful sky blue, my favorite. And then I also have a cerulean by Senelier, which is a lovely, lovely sky blue. Before um, discovering the manganese blue hue, this was my go-to sky blue color. And I still use it a lot. Wonderful. And then a color that I don't use very often, but still I find myself using it quite a, a few times. And it's absolutely a staple in any palette. And it is um, Winsor & Newton cobalt turquoise it's great because um, it's opaque and as a finishing touch it's fantastic for water is fantastic for uh, touches of cold light in urban sketching is fantastic i just i'm crazy about this color i couldn't live without also for color variation in c i like it very much so this is my first row as you see, there are some colors that are almost finished and I have to refill, like the Cerulean Blue by Senelier or the Ultramarine Blue Always by Senelier. And some are barely touched, like the Deaf Blue by Schminke, but uh, I'm waiting for suggestions how to use it. Let's go to the second row. In the second row, I have a Cotman color that I don't use much. So it's there just because I want to finish it. And it is Cotman Emerald. It's a like, very vibrant green. Cotman, once again, would not be my first choice, but because I have it, I just use it. So maybe I finish it and I replace it with a phthalo green, which I don't have in my palette. And this is Cotman Emerald. I use it for mixing with phthalo blue for tropical sky. Then I have a color that is very, very beautiful, but very hard to re-wet. And it is uh, Emerald by My Mary. Despite that they call it Emerald, I think in Italian it is uh, Verde Verona. It's Viridian actually. And it is a PG-18 and it's a very delicate, almost weak, granulating green, very beautiful, 
very, very, very hard to be wet. You need um, to layer it to see something, but look how beautiful it is. It's not my Mary that is weak and hard to be wet. It's PG-18 Viridian in general that is like this. I don't have many ingredients. I have this my Mary and uh, use it a lot, but I know that uh, this is uh, the typical behavior of this pigment. Then I have another green that uh, I don't use much, but uh, I really like, so I would never take it away, take it out from my palette, although I don't use it very often. And it is green, uh, so PG23, and this is by Rembrandt, this version. Look at how beautiful, organic, delicate this uh, green is. I really love it for um, landscapes, the faraway plants, backgrounds. That's very nice for pottery, it's very nice. Then I have a color that I almost never use. I could easily take this out. It's a very opaque green at the end. It is chromium oxide green. I have to research a little possible uses for this, maybe in mixes. I don't really use it very much. Once again, I'd love your comments about these colors. This version is by Rembrandt, one of my favorite brands. And uh, let me know if you use it and how you use it because uh, it's just sitting there in my palette. Then I have a sap green. Sap green is, uh, of course, my go-to green for leaves and illustration. This is by Sennelier and it's not uh, the typical sap green like um, you see from Winsor & Newton. I would like to replace it maybe with um, Winsor & Newton sap green. This is uh, nice but kind of opaque. So I have to water it down a lot when I use it, otherwise it's opaque. And I prefer usually transparent colors with some exceptions like cobalt turquoise. Then I have another um, color by Sennelier, beautiful green this one, and it is um, olive green, lovely color separation. It's a yellowish green, but it's not artificial like some yellowish green. This is very organic and natural, and I like it very, very much. I recommend it to everyone. It's a very organic green, doesn't need to be muted. You can use it for illustrations, landscapes, although I like to mix my greens, but still, this is very nice, even used straight from your palette. Then one of my recent discoveries, I love this green, it's green gold, PY129, this is by Rembrandt, and they call it Azo Yellow Green. It's a wonderful color, it glazes so well, completely transparent. I use it a lot uh, as a last layer to give light to my greens, and also as a mixing green, it gives wonderful mixes. Soon a video about this, and you can make quinacridone gold with it if you mix it with magenta or alizarin crimson. Beautiful green. Then I have a green that uh, I don't use much, but uh, it's still nice, and it is Christmas green by Paul Rubens. It's nice for illustrations, for instance, if you have I don't know a green. Uh, shop front this is very nice or of course for any christmas illustration and this is called christmas green it's dark green it's nice i don't use it in landscapes though and i have two full pans by lucas i'm not sure of the names because these two full pans i got them through a mystery box i subscribed when i started painting i threw away the label so i'm not sure I think this might be May green or yellowish green or something like this. Don't use it much. 
sometimes for uh, medals or sometimes for illustration, but I don't use it much. I don't like these vibrant artificial greens. And um, one more green, this is called permanent green. I use it exclusively with uh, mixed with neutral tint when I want to reach a very dark green because I don't like it straight from the palette. It's kind of chalky. I like Lucas, but this green in particular is a bit artificial. I'm not crazy about it. So this is my second row, my greens. I have too many greens by far. I also mix a lot of my greens, but when you start painting, you don't really want to mix your colors. You want the ready-made convenience greens. So some, I use a lot the sap green. I use the nickel as a green. I sometimes use the earth green, and there are some um, colors that I hardly touch. The two Lucas, I force myself to use them because I want to finish them. And also I like to use the Paul Rubens sometimes because it's um, it's a nice green for a festive season or for far away trees. It's not bad. Let's go to the third rose, yellows and oranges. Once again, full pan by Lucas and it is this lemon yellow, very cold. And I'm not sure of the pigment because once again, this came with this mystery box and I was not much into pigment at that time. So it's, I think it's cadmium lemon yellow because it's very opaque, but I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a nice, um, it's a nice lemon yellow. I don't use lemon yellow that much. Sometimes I do, but um, I tend to use warmer yellows in my sketches. Then I have a color that I use a lot and it is Naples Yellow by Sennelier. Oh, what a nice buttery warm yellow. Great for sky, great for uh, underpainting, great for background. This has white in it, so it's kind of opaque. Then I have a different Naples Yellow and this one is PBR 24. No white in it, if I'm not wrong. And it is Naples Yellow Deep by Winsor & Newton. And it is very nice. It's slightly more earthy. It's like a very light yellow ochre or raw sienna. And it's perfect color for sky, for yellow sky. I like yellow skies a lot. So this is a color that um, I really like. Maybe I don't really need two Naples Yellow. And uh, but I have two because I like this color so much, and also here I have a color that um, you see it's almost finished, and it is. I hope you can see it uh, on screen because it's a very weak color, and it is the reddish version of Naples Yellow by Rembrandt, and it is nice to use both in skies because it has this peachy. Down, but also for um, flesh tone, if you sketch people um, on a quick sketch, this is this makes a nice uh, flesh tone. So I sometimes use it as a flesh tone if you don't want to mix my skin tone. Then I have one more Cotman color, a very nice one objectively. This one also, I can't wait to replace it with um, uh, an artist grade version, but it's cadmium yellow. I think it's a cadmium yellow hue by Cotman. And um, I use it for urban sketching as a last touch, as a touches of light in my sketches. Very nice yellow to have, cadmium yellow. I think that its opacity can come in very handy. Then one more color that I really like, and it is uh, Aureoline by Rembrandt. Actually, it's not genuine Aureoline, which is fugitive. This is a PY150 nickel azo yellow. It's a completely transparent yellow, great for glazing, great for mixing, fantastic, versatile yellow, and um, it's kind of brownish in mustone, 
and um, it washes down to a cold clean yellow I like it then I have my warm yellows this one is um, Gamboge by Mameri almost a light a yellowish orange this is Gamboge by Mameri perfect for fall very nice beautifully wet beautifully and then I have different warm yellow not so orangey very beautiful also and it is Indian yellow by Schminke maybe I didn't need these two maybe just one but I love warm yellow so much that I'm happy to have them both okay and this you see the difference huh? I hope you do this is like a very warm yellow and this has an orange touch in it so I can keep them both in my palette. Then one of my usual mistakes, I have um, Transparent Orange by Schminke, my favorite orange, absolutely. This is PO71, Parole Orange. Look at how beautiful this Schminke version is. Oh, it's bleeding with that, that's okay. Then I have Mm, wonderful another one more wonderful orange and this is uh, quinacridone orange by rembrandt this is also a pigment that um, has disappeared so i have bought a huge tube i have a high stock of this pigment po48 it's an earthy orange it's almost almost an orangey burnt sienna it's wonderful it's really wonderful and then don't ask me why i have by my mary pyrrole orange so exactly the same pigment as this uh, schmink and transparent orange very similar very beautiful this one also transparent slightly burnt orange and um, just didn't realize it was identical when i set it up so now i'm uh, trying to finish one of them so i can replace it maybe with um, cadmium orange i really don't want to um, take any of these pants out just can't i don't know it's can't help can't help it it's stronger than me i can't do it so I will keep a color that I don't like until it's finished and I force myself using it and then I get rid of it. But I can't, I can't get rid of it while there is still color in the pan. Okay, so this is the third row. As you see, my oranges are well used. Schminke more than the my Mary because it's the same pigment. So I'm trying to finish at least this one. And uh, I use them all except for this lemon yellow, which is not exactly my kind of yellow, but I use them all a lot. I'm very happy of this choice. I would like to introduce more yellows actually in my new palette that I will set up as a complement to this. And we'll talk about it in one of my next videos. Here I have one more Cotman. And it's a nice color. Don't use it very much, but it's nice for portrait actually. And it is um, cadmium pale red uh, hue. It's a lovely vermilion. And it's by Cotman. I think this is one of the best Cotmans I have. Don't use it much. I could use it more, especially for portraits. Very nice color. Bravo, Cotman. Then I have a color that I feel guilty because it's fugitive, but I just adore it. And it is Opera Rose or Opera Pink. This is by Schminke. And it's a beauty, especially if you mix it in sky or urban sketching as a last touch for city lights. It's a wonderful, wonderful pink. I know it's fugitive. I promise I will only use it in sketchbook, but uh, I'm in love with this. Then one of uh, my first loves, you know that you never forget first loves, still use it a lot. And it is uh, Potter's Pink by Schminke. 
look at how beautiful it is i think that um, potter pink was my first heavily granulating colors and that's how and that's how i fell in love with granulation look at this wonderful potter's pink i use it for buildings i use it for sky i use it for pottery of course as the name says wonderful then i have uh, alizarin crimson by kotman and i think this is um, pr206 very beautiful very beautiful not so pigmented as probably this um it's a Winsor and newton artist grade counterpart but still very nice and i use it a lot it's my go-to alizarin in crimson when it will be finished i will replace it with the professional grade then one more of my favorite colors and it is cobalt violet don't have many occasions many opportunities to use it but when i need it Oh, I'm so happy. It's Cobalt Violet by Rembrandt. Heavily granulating, kind of weak, kind of cloudy and gluey, but beautiful in sky. Wonderful, delicate violet, reddish violet. Then a rose by Rembrandt. Very nice one, and it is uh mother lake deep by rembrandt i use it um, as a replacement of alizarin crimson actually so i don't use it on its own but um, i mix it for instance with um, emerald by my mary with viridian for uh, dark and it works very very well for a dark wonderful grays then i have uh, Pyro Red and it's by Rembrandt and it's called by them um, Deep Permanent Red. It's a warm, opaque, incredibly pigmented red. It's my go-to red for last touches in urban sketches, you know, for city lights, car lights. Uh, it works incredibly well i love it also it's great mixing red of course it's gonna last me like 10 years because i use it in small touches but it's very beautiful then i have a color that i find simply wonderful but i don't use much here again if you have suggestion how to use it i think that in portraits for instance for lips it could be wonderful and it is um Perilene Maroon by Windsor & Newton. I have the full pan, that's why it takes up so much space. Wonderful color, wonderful, just didn't use it much. There's a shadow for red sometimes. Um, it's a dark red that um, I don't know how to use, but uh, let me know your, your examples of suggestions in the comments, please. Look at how beautiful it is. You know, my hand always go to the same colors. So this is Perlene Maroon. I need to use it more often. I will, I promise. Then one of my, my favorite brown, absolutely. And it is Warm Sepia by Senelier. This is a color that I keep buying and rebuying. It's a wonderful sepia. It's, it has a warmth in it. It's very dark very pigmented works wonderfully for soil and for shadows for it's incredible mixing brown or pure i use it both ways then i have uh, this van dyke brown by my mary that um, it's kind of weak and light i really don't know how to use it and uh, i use it for trees sometimes because it's very organic but uh, I don't find many uses for it. Um, it's kind of uh, muted, colder brown. Once again, if you have suggestions, it's the only Van Dyke brown I have. So maybe I should um, try a different brand. If you have suggestions, please. Then I have Burnt Sienna by Cotman. 
it's a nice hue but it's not very pigmented so i can't wait to finish it and i use it just for finishing it because i want to switch to artist gray it's a very lovely color don't take me wrong look at how beautiful it is it's just not very pigmented i know that uh, my palette would benefit from the artist gray version of this burnt amber color is beautiful just the intensity is not the same and uh, this is my red and browns uh, raw and uh, as you see i use a lot of the opera pink also the red uh, cadmium red pale is used i don't use it that much the opera pink is almost finished the aliza and crimson i used a lot the potter's pink uh, sparingly these other reds very much the browns and the perilene maroon just a little indentation just please suggestions now one of uh, probably the color that I feel and refill more often, and it is Burn Sienna. This is um, by Rembrandt, and it is, if I'm not wrong, PBR7. I also love the PR101 version by Windsor & Newton, but uh, I currently have the Rembrandt version in my uh, palette, and it works perfectly fine. Very lovely color, very useful. I use it all the time, but Sienna. It's probably my most used color, the one that I have bought more often in my life. Then a color that I don't use very much, but still use, and it is a wonderful uh, PR101, and it is Indian Red by Rembrandt. It's like a colder version of uh, English Red. It's wonderful in sky, it's wonderful for mixing muted purples, it's wonderful in portraits. I could live without this wonderful Indian red. I maybe use more often Indian red than Perilene Maroon. They kind of serve the same usage and um, I really like it. It's beautiful, beautiful red. And this is by Rembrandt, as did I say. Then a color that um, I use a lot, don't laugh. It's a spinel brown by Schminke. Don't laugh because I use it uh, for painting my dogs. You know, I have two golden retrievers. And this is the perfect color. What is down to a beauty? Oh no! It's bleeding. It, um, it, it's the perfect color for um, golden retriever hair, for shadows. I use maybe yellow ochre or rose sienna or quinacridone gold for the lighter parts. And for the darker parts, I use spinel brown and burnt sienna. I'm really specialized in painting uh, golden retriever. It's one of my favorite subjects. And if you have a golden retriever and if you want to paint it, you must have this spinel brown for ears, for instance. Then I have, wow, here we are. Use this a lot. Quinacridone Gold by Schminke. I have a whole video, of course, about Quinacridone Gold, comparing all the brands I have. And I have three videos actually about Quinacridone Gold, one about the original pigment, the genuine pigment, then one comparison video with all my brands, and then one where you can learn to mix your Quinacridone Gold without buying it. Look how beautiful it is. Wonderful mixing yellow. You can use it as a primary yellow. It mixes wonderfully. Gorgeous oranges, gorgeous green. And then, once again, I have some uh, excess of versions for Rosienna. This is the first one, and it is Monte Amiata by Daniel Smith. By far my favorite version of Rosienna. It's golden, wonderful Rosienna. This washed out is wonderful in sky, it doesn't mix to a green. It's really wonderful. Beautiful Rosienna. Then I have um, Rosienna by Windsor and Newton. Very hard to re-wet, very, very hard to re-wet. 
but beautiful. It's more yellowish, less earthy than the Monte Amiata, but you don't really need both Rose Sienna and Monte Amiata in your palette. So if when I finish uh, this Windsor and Newton Rose Sienna, I will just keep the Monte Amiata and let's see how I can replace it. We'll see. Then of course I have uh, Yellow Ochre. This is my old Cotman. And it's not my favorite yellow ochre, that's why it's not yet finished because I use a lot of yellow ochre because sometimes I just reach out to richer yellow ochres. This is very nice, but once again, it's not as pigmented as um, an artist grey, so I kind of prefer to use artist grey. Then I have a color that I never ever use, although it's very beautiful, and it is a yellow iron oxide, same pigment of yellow ochre, but transparent and more earthy. And it is, um, as I said, yellow iron oxide by Rembrandt. Very nice. Really, if I look at these five colors, I don't see the need to have these five versions of basically very similar colors. Look at this. Uh, I need to take some decisions here. Okay, so it's a bit redundant my collection of um, um, earthy yellows. Then I have this color, titanium buff, very nice color. I have the Van Gogh uh, version. I know that Daniel Smith is much nicer. I also have Agallo and Roman Schmal, but I need a tube to put here. And uh, this is not bad, actually. It mixes lovely colors, pastel colors. It's nice for flowers. Don't use it very much, even for clouds. This is very lovely. I must uh, just remind myself to use it more often. Don't use it much. Warm gray. By Saint Elie, exactly the same. Uh, it's exactly the same thinking. I have same feelings. I love it. I don't use it, but I don't wanna just get rid of it because you never know. Might use it one day. Then I have this beautiful, beautiful gray. It's called Davis Gray, and it is by Rembrandt. There is a more famous version by Winsor & Newton, and it is a greenish, a greenish gray. Look at this. It's very nice for, for winter foliage or like uh, ghost leaves when you want to add foliage to a uh, wreath and you want to add uh, lighter leaves. Uh, I don't know. I like it very much. Once again, I don't use it very much. But for uh, flowers, I think it's very beautiful as a, as a muted, very grayish green. And then last color, it's a color that I like to use and it is Purple Shadow by Paul Rubens. It has quite a dry shift, so probably it's not as good as the Daniel Smith versions or Roman Schmal version. I have them both, but I want to finish this one. It's very nice when you when it's wet, but then it has a dry shift. But I still use it a lot for quick sketches. It's a perfect um, it's a perfect shadow color. This is by Paul Rubens. Okay, so this is uh, the last row. As you see, my burnt sienna is screaming to be refilled. Queen Aquilon Gold, say. Raw sienna is almost almost finished, so I can replace it with something else. Yellow ochre, of course, needs to be refilled. Color that I always use, and these last colors I don't use much except for purple shadow. So this is also a very nice palette, actually. 60 colors, 60 displays for 60 half pounds. I have less colors because I have quite a few full pans, but that's a very nice one. And uh, I think I like this version, although I'm finding myself uh, more uh, looking for larger, larger wells. Uh, I think that half pans are a bit small for my 
new evolved style of painting. I paint with bigger brushes, I paint uh, on larger paper, so um, half pans can be a bit awkward with larger brushes sometimes. Let's wait until everything dries and then I'll be back for my final conclusions and asking for your suggestions. Okay, when the colors dry, I will just um, talk to you about my studio palettes. This is my main studio palette, the one that I use for larger paintings or commissions. I feel pretty comfortable with this palette. I just need to integrate it with some new colors that I have discovered, uh, especially since I started this channel, like the whole Quinacridone family. It's a bit absent from this palette, except for the Quinacridone burnt orange and the Quinacridone gold but all the quinacridone pink and yellows and magenta are uh, like um, a big absent and i need to set up a new palette with some new favorite colors if you have suggestions of some colors that for you is clearly missing like the cobalt blue classic cobalt blue or some quinacridone magenta please leave that in the comment i'd love to hear from you then what I use in my studio, again, I used to use this white knight a lot. It's wonderful paint. You see some colors are almost finished. I really think that I had a lot of fun with this. I have some Jackson's colors here, Naples yellow and cadmium pale hue, but the rest is all white knights. I really love this paint. I just feel a bit um, awkward using it uh, during the war. So um, it's kind of suspended. It's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful paint. I feel so sorry. I just um, kind of not like using it until the war is over. I hope that uh, ends soon. So my beloved white knights are there in a drawer, but it's great paint actually. Then I have uh, replaced these uh, White Knights with um, Paul Rubens as a second palette for quick sketches. Uh, you know that I use this a lot. These are tubes. It's a 24 tubes Paul Rubens that I have squeezed in this small, uh, this small uh, box, tin box. Um, it has quite decent colors. They're not the best in the world, but they're quite decent. And for sketches, they're just perfect. They have great um, value for money. So um, I use these a lot and you see some colors finished. And uh, this is my second uh, studio palette for quick sketches in a sketchbook. And then I have recently set up uh, this um, this um, palette i love this format it's ceramic and uh, i use this for um, urban sketching mostly for urban landscapes and cityscapes there are some useful colors that i some of these colors i have here but this is really dedicated to um, urban scapes and uh, I think it's uh, it's very nice. It's a very nice palette. And if you wish, just let me know. I will swatch these colors for you. It's very nice, very nice, well thought, uh, curated palette for urban scapes. Um, and uh, that's it. Let's uh, see if our colors are dry. Yes, now my colors are dry, fully dry, and we can draw our conclusions about uh, what uh, I need to integrate and uh, what I use, what I don't use. For sure, I don't need two identical pyrrol, 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 I don't know, oranges, uh, so one of them should go away. So I'm trying to finish one and then I will replace it. Uh, I think I would love to include uh, a different yellow and a different orange. These greens are far too many. I can't wait to finish these two Lucas because I have too many greens. Uh, I would love to introduce a cobalt green. Uh, I don't have cobalt green here. 
So I also would like to introduce Eftano turquoise, which is beautiful color for seaside. And uh, the reds, I'm quite happy, but I really think I need to introduce some quinacridone colors. Let me know your thinking, of course. Same for uh, the browns. Uh, maybe I need some uh, raw cyan, um, some, sorry, some raw amber as well. I don't have a raw amber, but I probably need one. And uh, I don't need all these um, yellow, earthy yellows, of course, I don't. And also in this area, I have some um, superfluous colors. So, but let me know what you think about it. And um, I'm waiting for your suggestion for my new palette of uh, 2023 that I will set up. This new palette that I will set up will not replace this one. I will complement it uh, with colors that I have recently discovered and that I would like to introduce in my daily painting, like the quinacridone reds and rose, like the manganese violet or the ultramarine violet, beautiful colors uh, that I have uh, in my collection that I never use because I at the end of the day, I use my studio palette, so I need to set up this new palette. I'm waiting for your suggestions. What do you think of this? Do you think there is some important color missing? I'm sure you do. So I'm waiting for your comments and suggestions. I'm ready to talk to you and I'm ready to hear from you. Thanks a lot for having watched this with me. And if you want to see my next videos, especially especially the new palette that I want to set up. Subscribe to my channel so you won't miss it. Ciao, ciao, and uh, I'll see you soon in this channel. It's Elisabetta. Ciao, ciao.